Hey friends, welcome to a new video here on the LNM channel. Today is another video in the Living PKM series that I've been doing here on the channel where we explore the changes in my, it used to be my obsidian system, but we're going to see that last month I started delving into another system called capacities. And so really it's just a way to explore and showcase what I've been doing in my systems, uh, my digital systems. Uh, to related to my learning, my researching, and my kind of like ideation, commonplacing world, realm, situation. So if that is something that sounds appealing to you, then go ahead and keep on watching. So we are going to start with Obsidian because I started the month in Obsidian. Uh, one of the first things that I did was I decided to rename my vault, and this did translate into my new space in Capacities, but... I have decided to start calling my vault, my learning system, my PKM, the digital swamp. And the reason for that is because swamps are transition zones uh, because both land and water play a role in creating this environment. And so I thought that that was particularly fitting because as you can see in this really quick preview of capacities, I've titled my space the digital swamp because swamps are transition zones where both land and water play a role in creating an environment. My PKM is the place where things, the things that I am collecting can live with the things that I am thinking to create the essence of me. And the essence of me is something that is related to some of my core values, but is also taken from these videos that I started watching by PKM Beth. Uh, I'll leave her linked down below. Uh, but when I started moving over to capacities, I started watching a lot of her videos and she talks about her core tenet or core value of essence. And so that really resonated with me. And that's why the verbiage is there. But that is what one of the first things is kind of like, and maybe it's just semantics and it's not necessarily a systematical thing, but I do believe that there is power in the the name the name of things, right? So like if I go here to one of my older notes, the power of a name, <laughs> you'll see here that I had struggled. To, I've been struggling for a long time to rename my Substack newsletter. I do think I have a good grasp on it now, but I first wrote this note when I came across a quote on a website that described why I believe that naming is so important. And it is the website uh, Fruitful Presentation by Gu Hongmin. And in it, he wrote, if I name something, something, something becomes something. If I name something article, something becomes an article. If I name something list, something becomes a list. If I name something cherry, something becomes a cherry. A good name effectively implies the content. The results are already determined by how I name it. And um, this idea of like the power of naming something is really, really important to me. And so while it might seem disjointed or disconnected from the systematic changes that I'm making in my system, I think it does relate because how I name something impacts how I approach said thing. So that was the first thing that I did. I also changed the font to Arial and I consolidated the notes page, free writing and musing sections. So if you've been here a while, you'll know about my daily note kind of like um, situation where I have life notes and musings and free writing as two different sections. But I did end up just putting those two things together because oftentimes I had some tension between what goes in life notes and using what goes in free writing. And so I just decided to put those all together. And so you'll kind of see here that I put them together and that kind of just consolidated the, the daily note. Another thing that I did was modify the monthly note to remove the full media log list because I don't ever really look at that anyways. I prefer a weekly view for the media log. And I also removed the one line a day section because I haven't been using it removed from the property from the daily note. And so one of the things that I did was again, when in relation to the monthly note, which is what we're in right now, I did add this um, obsidian vault wrap up change log um, data query here um, as well, which I don't think I put here, but I kept the first songs, but I did take out the media log. Um, I just have the, I logged 33 notes in here but I kept the media log just in the weekly note because I, I only really reference it on a weekly basis. And so I didn't, I, it felt redundant and not anything that I really wanted to do. So I, I did take that out of the, um, 
the template. And then because I wasn't using that one line a day property, I just ended up removing it as well from, from my notes. It doesn't remove it from previous notes. I didn't delete the property itself, but I did remove it from the template into future notes. And then lastly, I restructured the daily note. Oh, I'm like, what are you talking about here? <laughs> See, sometimes I write things that I don't know what I'm talking about. So basically what I mean is that I restructured how my daily notes kind of show up in the calendar notes. So like the, the folders themselves. Originally, I had it so that I it was like a daily note. So it was daily, weekly, yearly. And within there, I had subfolders. But I did change that because I realized I prefer to have it by year and have everything inside. So I have the year now as the main folder and then the daily, the monthlies and the weeklies. And they're not um, in subfolders at all. It's just one big folder. I found that this made more sense to how I kept things. And then I created a records MOC to hold annotations, time-based notes, right? Like annotations, logs, lists, and stuff like that. Um, I made that my records folder. And so anything that's kind of more time-based in nature goes, goes in this folder as well. And I was perfectly fine using Obsidian um, and having fun. I was, I was having a good time. And then I, if you, if you're new here, I am participating in I'm a part of the accelerator program for linking your thinking with Nick Milo and light 16 is happening right now, which is like a big core cohort workshop situation and they have expert sessions and on the, uh, let's see, is this October? Yes. On the 26th, I watched a video by an expert session where they talked about capacities and it shifted, it shifted things around and I decided to try it out and that's a big change uh, because I wasn't looking to leave Obsidian. And yet I am having a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and showcase that to you now. So this is my capacities. This is my home note. And essentially everything that's in here are things that I have done for like October. Uh, it does lean in a little bit into November and I think I'm going to make a, a, its own kind of standalone video when I like on capacities once I finish the light 16 cohort, which is set to finish next week. Um, just to guys like to show you what it is that this looks like with a little bit more detail. I don't want to spend too much time on it right now. I just kind of want to show you what it is that I have been worked on working on and what it looks like. So Obsidian Lover tries capacities. <laughs> So if you don't know what capacities is, it is a PKM system and it's a little bit different than Obsidian just really quickly. Um, it's I'm sorry, it's a little bit. Yes, it's a little bit different from Obsidian and it's a little bit similar as well. But one of the core things with capacities is that there are absolutely no folders. Instead, it works with objects. So our units of thinking are made up of objects like book, people, conversations or ideas. And so everything is an object. And um, I find that to be really interesting because I definitely think like that as well. And if you've been here for a while, you know that there was one point in my Obsidian Vault where I removed almost all of the folders and I just had everything in one place. And so it's very much not top down or bottom up. It's kind of like organic. I don't know. I, I want to do a little bit more thinking in relation to that, but the reason why I decided to try capacities is not just because it was like this new program or software that was being shown to me on this uh, expert session, but because it seemed to resolve a lot of the tension points that I was experiencing with Obsidian. Like I mentioned earlier, I was not intending to leave Obsidian. I love Obsidian quite a lot. I've been working through it a couple of months now, trying to make it better and better for me. And, and it's really a place that I love to be in. But there was a couple of things that I was struggling with. And one of them was the uh, treatment of images and media. So um, Obsidian doesn't treat media as its own type of note that you could add metadata to. And as someone who heavily uses images and media and visual elements in their thinking process. This is something that was a point of friction for me quite a lot. If you wanted to add metadata to a note, you would either have to get a plugin and create sidecar files, or you would have to create individual files, embed the actual attachment of the media into that file, and then assign the metadata to that. And that just felt a little clunky to me. Um, by contrast, Capacities treats images as standalone 
notes that you can add all of the same metadata that you would add to any other object in the vault. So for example, here are some images that I have in my vault right now, and I have properties in them, right? Like I have a tag called wisdom for fictional characters. I have a tag for BMW and I've created a quote from this, um, which is a quote object and I've attached the image to it. Here's another section, right? Like I have spiral, which is the cover for one of the books that I read in October by Koji Suzuki. And I do have that linked to the actual um, a book itself, as you can see here, which is another object, but I do have it tagged as green. I have tags for colors now, which is really, really fun because I do love to kind of connect things via colors as well. It's something that is, is a way that I think. And you can have collections inside of objects, so it makes it even easier for you to kind of look at these things. But like, for example, I have spiral here and I have that assigned to it. And um, I have my notes for this. And I really consider it, and I know it's not just me because I've seen other people mention this as well that I've not said this to. It's like Obsidian and Notion had a baby. What I really love about Capacities and why I was willing to try it is because you still have linked notes. I don't think I could I could move out of a linked note system at all um, anymore. I do definitely need um, the linked notes to be able to do these connections and you have a graph. So there is a graph. It is not as extensive or as customizable of a graph as in obsidian so that is something to keep in mind uh but you do have one and it is really really cool i also there is also a calendar system and automatically it um adds the notes that you created today into here and you also have date references that come up on here which are things data queries that i had to set up in obsidian um, a downside that this has versus obsidian in my case because i do it a lot is the properties so the daily system does not have a place for you to put properties in it so if you want to track kind of like the properties in the same way that i do then you would need to do something like what i did which is create a separate um object for that kind of like metadata that you want to keep and so that was a workaround i am still considering possibly um keeping obsidian for those kind of properties but that's not something that i've decided just yet a couple of other things that i set up were my home note uh which i really love i've been able to add these kind of like gifts directly in here and these gifts are again standalone notes that i can add metadata to so i have a gifts tag that now all the gifts live together and i have a pink tag that has all of the pink images and i really really love it and so I've created all of these tags so far. Um, and like I mentioned, I'm not going to deep dive into Obsidian right now, but I'm sorry, into capacities right now. I just wanted to showcase that I have been experimenting with this sort of system. And what's really cool, the calendar functionality is really, really powerful. Um, let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to change my face really quickly here. And you have week, which is all the way like this. And then you have month um, as well. So I can go here to October and you can see all of my monthly notes. Um, and then these are my daily notes for the week. And I have set up a weekly note to kind of function similarly to the weekly note that I had in Obsidian. It's not 100% done but you can kind of see here because there are if you pay for the capacity so pretty much you can get access to most everything that you're going to need in capacities for free uh, but there are certain things that you would need to pay like the queries i believe like this extensive of a query you would need to to pay for it but it's only two dollars more than i pay for obsidian sync so it's something that is worth it for me and then i have I don't want to show the source notes because there are images in there of people that I don't necessarily think want their images shown, but um, I have it separated by kind of like capture notes and creation notes. So things that are related to sources outside of me and things where the source is me. Um, and I have that there. And to kind of replicate the um, random note stuff, I have these queries in here where I'm able to randomize um, notes for serendipity and stuff like that 
I did move all of my people over and I'm able to separate them by domain. So I have fictional, notable, network, family, and friends. And I do have to classify these. But I was able to move all of my people over from Obsidian. Um, I still have to add the information for quite a few of them, but some of them already do have their, their metadata inside. So like, for example, Miko Shiomi, um, I added her birth year, her uh, place that associated with her, her field, the domain. Um, and what's really cool is that I have years now. So there's some cool connections that can possibly be made there for people who have died. So like, for example, where is Anais? Here she is. So for example, Anais, I was able to add a lifespan. And what's really, really cool about that is that if I go into the calendar, and I go into 1967, for example. You can see that Anais was alive <laughs> during this time. It's so cool. And like, for example, if I go, I believe Koji Suzuki's birthday was in 57. Let's see here. So Koji Suzuki was born in 1957. Uh, 13th of May. So if I go to 13th of May, I can see that C.S. Lewis was alive during that time, and so was Anais Nin. And so this is really cool because I am going to be, I'm studying different historical events and stuff like that, and kind of being able to see the time frames um, converging, I think is going to be really, really cool. So that's, that's really fun. Um, and yeah, I'm still playing around with it. There's still a lot that needs to be done. But I am having so much fun. And I think the the last thing I want to say before I kind of finish this uh, video, because like I said, there's not much to show aside from that. There's a lot that I want to kind of get into with capacities, but I would spend hours and hours and hours on end. So if you have any specific questions, let me know. But I do plan on making a sort of um, walkthrough of the entire system so far. I lost my train of thought. I don't know what it is that I wanted to say. One last thing I did want to mention is that I have not transferred all of my notes from Obsidian into Capacities. I'm doing that little by little. Like I mentioned, I already moved all of the people over, but I have not moved pretty much any of the things notes, which would be kind of like glossary. Um, and I have not moved all of my statement notes, which would be ideation. I haven't moved all of my media notes either. So there's, there's that. Um, but... Yeah, I am working through it slowly and surely. Oh, I remember what it was that I was going to say. So kind of to round it out, even if I decide that I want to go back to Obsidian later on, I was talking on the Discord about trying out capacities. And Ellis, I believe, was who mentioned that at the end of the day, if I end up moving back, I still would have learned something. There is this quote from Nick Milo, and he says that even when you know that the environment is shaping you, you don't realize how much the environment is shaping you. And to that, I also say in the same way you shape your environment, right? And so um, the environment is different. Capacities is, although has very good, like a good amount of similarities to Obsidian, has a lot of differences. And it's making me think about my system, what's important for me and my learning systems and um, kind of like second brain, idea verse, whatever it is you want to call it, Zettelkasten. Um, what's important for me in there to make sure that my system, my personal system is software agnostic, right? Independent of what software I'm using. And I think the only really thing that I would need is linked notes. What is it that I need at its core, at its basic? What is it that I need in my systems for them to function in a way that helps me in my sense making, my ideation, my creation? if you will. And so I'm having a lot of fun. And regardless of whether I stay or I come back or I have a combination of the two, it is making me think of the way that I think in a really cool way. And I think that it's a similar approach that I have with my journals, right? Like at the end of the day, um, medium and form is affected by that which it is contained in, but it is also you. And how do you come and show up in that system? So that is kind of like what my PKN system is looking like. My, my PKM world is looking like uh, or looked like in October. Really exciting things. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out for some more videos on that on that front. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. 
Otherwise, I will catch you in the next video.